Hey you, welcome to the Row by Row Garden Show, the best dead gum garden show on the internet and the radio too. Glad to have you this evening. We got some interesting things we're gonna talk about, Mama Hoss. We're gonna okay. be talking about genetically modified foods because we got some new information. So make sure you stay around to the end. We've got some new information that you probably did not know about genetically modified foods that I think is really interesting, especially around the holiday season where we're buying so much food from the grocery store. So we want to share that with everybody. I found it interesting. I'm sure they will as well. Straight from the source. Straight from the source. So what about Thanksgiving? We've got Thanksgiving behind us. Mm, ate a lot. Ate too much. Had good family time. Yep. Yep. Good to see it come and good to see it go. Yeah. Yep, we did. We enjoyed it. It was good. Now we're on to Christmas. Yep, on to Christmas. And, uh, you know, this cold weather we've had come in has really sweetened up the greens. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I heard somebody on TikTok talk about the procedure of how the cold weather makes the greens sweeter. This is something we've known for years. I, I've known it, but I really didn't know what was going on. Yeah, so the proteins convert sugars when the cold weather hits. And we're going to do a little tribute to the almighty collard. collard. Collard green. Let me tell you about collards. They've been around for a long time. Um, do you know actually where they came from? Where? South Georgia? No, from Greece. And they were brought over with the slave trade to America. And actually, it's one of the few vegetables that the American slaves could grow in their own garden. Um, very popular way back in the day, kind of waned a little bit, but it's growing popularity again now. So much so that South Carolina has made the collard as their state vegetable. Mm. So what are you eating? For good reason. What I am eating is flash collards, F-L-A-S-H, which is a variety that we like. It's a hybrid. And I'm eating bacon. You got to have bacon mm -hmm. with your, you got to have some kind of meat, preferably pork with your collard greens and cornbread. I'll talk about this cornbread in just a minute. Mama Hoss made this cornbread earlier. I got a mouthful of collards here. <laughs> this cornbread right here is made from our blue corn. You'll show them that thing? Yep. So you took the blue corn. Show them the corn. Yep. That's the way we keep it in the refrigerator. And we grind it. We got a little grinder that uh, sits on the counter and she grinds it up and makes cornmeal here with it. Look how fine this is. Yep. That's good stuff for mm -hmm. blue. And we also do a... Uh, like I had this, it doesn't matter. We also have a Jimmy Red we make red cornmeal with. But if you have never made your own cornbread from the corn you grew, from the whole kernel corn, you do not know what you're missing out of. This is absolutely awesome. It's got a flavor to it that you don't get from store-bought uh, cornmeal. Cornmeal, yeah. Yeah, and if you stay tuned next week, I'll do a video on actually I how I... Uh, ground this cornmeal and ma and the recipe for this cornbread. It's your basic recipe, but like I say, it tastes a lot different um, when you make it from scratch. When you grow the corn, you grind the corn, and then you make the cornmeal. Fresh. Look at there. Man, ain't that pretty. Our cameraman's got his uh, tongue hanging out. <laughs> I'm gonna let him try this one right here. <laughs> And then, so you've got your pot liquor. Yep. You know what pot liquor is? I do, but you can share it with everyone. So the way I do these collard greens, and they'll be on a video also, is I take some onions and brown them in some bacon grease. I cut these collards up, add them to the mixture, add some chicken broth and some ham hock, and I let them cook on low for about 45 minutes. And then you take your pot liquor, and that's what you dip that cornbread in. Mm. Mm. Yeah, if you're not doing the collard thing. Now, a lot of you, including me, back when I was coming up, I didn't care a lot for collards. I didn't like them either. 
But we used to cook them a lot different. We had them big old long leaves that we let age out there and they get a little bit of a stronger flavor to them. These leaves here were a lot smaller and we cropped them off. We didn't cut the whole stalk. We cropped them off a lot smaller leaf and it has a little different flavor to it than the ones I remember coming up. I don't know, maybe while well, you cook it some too. But I got where I love college. Do you put some onions in those as well? Mm -hmm, I am. Some of our nest onions in there. Yep. Good stuff there. I'm going to put it right over here in case I get the opportunity to for snack on it during <laughs> the show. How about that? Mm, that's good. So Christmas is coming up, Mama Hoss. It is. And so we want to show you a few ideas for Christmas. It's only four weeks away. Yep. For the next couple of shows, we're going to do a Christmas ideas. And she'll have one and I'll have one. Yeah. So go ahead and show me. So the one I'm going to show you is the Hodag kit, tool kit. So in this tool kit, you get the Hodag, which has a short end and a long end. So this is really good for making a furrow. This is really good for making a hole to um, plant your transplant in or if you just need to cultivate around. And then we got the rake, and I really love this one. It's good to amend your bed. You can get out those little weeds, um, level off your bed. It's just an all around good tool. And then the little spade here. Now folks, these are USA made. They're made of high carbon steel. You got the wrong tool there. Uh-oh. Yep. It comes with a hand shovel instead of this oh, one. Oh, I do. Okay. Yep, it comes with a hand shovel, which is a big trial. It's okay. It's, it's all okay. right. You cook some good collard greens. I'm going to let you <laughs> slide on this. The, um, the handles are placed in here with a riveted socket design, so they will stay in that piece of wood for life. These are... Made in America. Made in America in Idaho. For eighty nine ninety nine, you get the three, the set of three, and it's everything you need to cultivate your raised bed or your container garden. Yep. All right. So mine, I'll show you here if I get it turned around. We're in little tight quarters here. This is our hod. It's American made hod, and this is the by far the most popular gift we sell. Every year we sell out of them, but we got a big shipment in this year. I don't know if we're going to have enough or not, but we got a bigger shipment in this year than we've ever had before because we was trying to prepare for the Christmas season. These are made in Maine, and the people absolutely love them. I always tell, if you got somebody that you don't know what to buy for, buy them one of these. We have sold thousands of them, and I've never heard the first person say, you know, I didn't like that hot. They even, all rave even, and rave about it. Even if you don't garden, people use these to care their dishes to church. Yep. They use them in their house to decorate. Yep. So it's not just for the gardener. Well, it's a it's craftsmanship on this thing is pretty awesome. You got this nice wood. You got this powder coated wire in there. What it was designed for is you can pick your vegetables, put them in there, and wash them off. But it's good for a multitude of other things. And it holds sixteen quarts. Is the capacity? Yep, fifty-four ninety-nine makes a wonderful gift. So if you got somebody you're not sure what they would enjoy, guarantee you this one right here will fit the bill. All right, if we get everything back underneath there, we got tight tight quarters with a Christmas tree behind us. So let's talk about genetically modified foods. Now we've touched on this before, and we're going to touch on some of the same stuff again, <laughs> but. We're going to add some new information out there. Now, genetically modified foods, for you that do not know, some people call them GMOs. Mm -hmm. Now, what this means is it is a plant. It can be an animal, too, but we're going to talk about plants. It is a plant that has been put a gene into from an unrelated species. So you take a gene from an unrelated species and put it into a plant for a particular reason. And that is why you get it genetically modified. Another way of putting this I read the other day that's pretty simple to understand is it is a process that cannot naturally happen on its own. Okay. So it's created through genetic engineering. Yep. 
So you take, you identify the gene that is desirable, mm -hmm. and you copy that information into the organism. For a particular reason. Now, it's always reason. done for some reason that's going to be beneficial, whether it's growing it or disease resistance or whatever. And then once you insert it, you grow in that new organism. Right. Which has that desired trait. Yep, okay. exactly. Yep. And it can be done for a multitude of reasons. They do it for insect control. Mm -hmm. So the corn that, that has been grown, they had the BT gene put in there. And if a corn earworm, which is a major pest for corn, bit into it, it would die. Mm -hmm. So the, the farmer didn't have to spray that corn. It could be done, uh, they developed squashes one time for viruses, because mm -hmm. squashes, we know have viruses real bad, so they had developed GMO squashes. And tolerance to herbicides. Cotton is a prime example of that. So cotton had the Roundup uh, gene in it, so it could spray Roundup over top of it and kill all the weeds. All those ended up having some issues, but that was the uh, the main reason most of those were I developed. I also read where they were trying to do some that were tolerant to drought. Yeah, and I'm not as familiar with that. Yeah, but I've read that also. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. uh, the thing about genetically modified foods is it just scares a lot of people, and for good reason, because there's a certain amount of uncertainty there. Mm -hmm. These uncertainty and these things that we don't understand, it's kind of like the pandemic we went through last year. We just don't know, and what we don't know, we're scared of. And that's the reason a lot of the GMOs, now we know for a fact there's some things to be concerned about that. Um, the one of the main things in my book to be concerned about is contamination of our of our regular seed stock. Mm -hmm. So if you got GMO corn that's grown over here and you got your regular heirloom corn that's grown over here, they can cross pollinate. And therefore, if anybody saves the seed off of that heirloom corn, it's got that GMO trait in it. So cross contamination from seed was a big issue from my, from my standpoint there. Mm -hmm. And so it, in potentially could eliminate some of the airline varieties because of that cross-pollination. Yeah, well, what happens is, is and this is not a very well-known fact, they do genetic testing on heirlooms a lot of times. <clears throat> they, you're allowed so much of genetically modified nowadays into heirlooms, but a lot of your heirlooms, even though they are called heirlooms, still have some contamination of GMOs in them. Mm, yep. yeah. Sad, but that's the truth. So I, when I was researching this, it said that dozens of nations prohibit the cultivation of GMO crops. Yep. Um, and this comes from 2015. 38 countries have a total or partial ban mm -hmm. on GMO. And although many European countries do not grow, Europe is one of the world's biggest consumers. Mm -hmm more than 30 million tons of corn and soy for livestock feed are imported every year. Into Europe? Into Europe. I thought Europe was probably on the forefront of the other way around. They don't grow it, but they import it. Oh, okay. So whether you know it or not, you're probably consuming some GMO products there. A lot of times they're kind of hid in the details. So a lot of your corn, high fructose corn syrup, which is an ingredient in just about all processed foods, more than likely comes from a GMO field corn that was grown. Mm -hmm. Let's go over some of the things that are more than likely GMO that's in the grocery store or in the foods that we eat. Okay. Get over here to my And And notes. it's not also just in your food. Think about pretty much any cotton is yeah. GMO cotton. So your sheets, your towels, your clothes, if it has cotton in it, it's probably more than likely a GMO cotton. Um, also, alcohol is made from the GMO corn. Or it, it could be. It, it could, could be. be. Hand sanitizer, gasoline, all these things. It's not just what you consume. It's the things you use. Yep. Uh, so cotton, over 90% of your cotton is genetically modified it's for your clothes. Soybeans, over 90% of your soybeans, and that's important because soybean oil is an ingredient in a lot of processed foods as well. And your cooking oil too. Now we talk about corn, over 90% of your field corn is genetically modified. Mm -hmm. 
Now, I think this is going to be changing somewhat in the near future. And there's a good bit of interesting information here that I've got for you that you probably do not know of. 80% or more, 80% is a conservative estimate there, of your sweet corn is not genetically modified. So over 80% of that corn that you grow grocery store and buy as fresh sweet corn is what we call conventional. And only around 20% of it is genetically modified. Now you will not know that by going to the grocery store and buying it because you can't tell the difference here. But what has happened in the last very few years is the consumer has created such a backlash and such a demand for the non-GMO corn that we have seen the move from the farmers have seen the move from growing those GMO corns back to conventional. So the sweet corn, you're pretty safe. To yeah, you're it's you're not. you're pretty safe on that, and it's simply due to customer demand, which is interesting to me. It's a good thing. Yeah, it's a good thing. Yep. So now your 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 field corns, that's a different story, but the trend seems to be going down on that. Also, you got potatoes. There is a GMO potato out there. Same thing has happened to it. I don't know if they still want in production or not. They was three or four or five maybe varieties at one time, they went south. As well as the summer squash. Summer squash, they had a program where some of your summer squash were GMO. They developed those for those viruses to be resistant. Same thing with those. Those companies have about abandoned that program simply because of customer demand. So the customer spoke and the companies had to listen, good. which is a good thing. Canola oil Yep. and your margarine um, has a lot of most GMO. Yep, a lot of GMOs in that. Talk about the sugar beet. Yeah, uh, over 50%, well, I say over around 50% of your sugar beets in this country are GMOs. This is interesting. 50% of our sugar comes from sugar beets and about 50% comes from sugar cane. Now, sugar cane is not GMO. So if you're eating processed sugar, there's a good chance some of that has come from a GMO source. From the sugar beet. From the sugar beet. Now, as I said earlier, we're seeing a huge demand away from the GMOs in foods and stuff. In 2016, Congress passed a bill called the Labeling Law. And what it did was by 2022, which is going to be here before we know it, yeah. all your food that you go to the grocery store has to be labeled whether it's GMO or not. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. But there's always devil in the details. So if there's there. any part of that food? With the exception of meat. So the two exceptions, there, well, there's actually three exceptions. One of the exceptions is they do not have to label what the feed of the animal. So if you go buy pork chops, they don't have to label whether that corn that was fed to that hog was GMO mm -hmm. or not. So meat is exempt. Dairy products are exempt. So they don't have to tell you what the milk cow was Drink, drink I mean. was <laughs> was fed to produce that milk, and also small companies. I believe under 2.5 million was it 250,000? Anyway, there was a threshold there on the gross sales of the company that they didn't have to report it. But that's pretty much that's non-existent there. So meat and dairy products are excluded. Now I said earlier that the devil's always in the details, and this is where the problem lies. The way the law was written is somewhere on that label, it has to state whether that product is derived, is a GMO product or not, or has GMO product ingredients in it. But it can be done in a very obscure way. And this is what you're going to see. So, you know, those little square barcodes, what do you call mm -hmm. these QR codes? Mm -hmm. They can be hidden, embedded. embedded into that. So the only way you would know is if that's on there and you scan it with your phone, then it would pull it up. Or it could be embedded on that packaging in a way that's really hard to find. So it has to be on the label, but it can be very obscure. To know that, you can do a little research if that's a big issue for you and to find out if that food has GMO in it or not. Mm -hmm. I found that interesting that, uh, that this is all happening in just a few weeks. Wow. So, yeah. So what's some pros of GMO? Are there any pros? Oh yeah, absolutely. So some of the things is environmental factors. And when I say that, I'm talking about spray, dr group, spray drift, pesticide exposures. So some of these GMO crops require less 
spraying so you don't have drift, you don't have contamination of groundwater and things like that. So that could be a benefit from mm -hmm. it. Also cost, less phosphor fuels running up and down the field spraying so you're using less cost. Mm -hmm. And there, that's another benefit to it. And some of the cons, something I didn't really realize, but it makes sense, is um, people with allergies can be real sensitive to these that are GMO crops. Right. Um, they introduce a lot of new proteins, and you just don't know. Well, basically, you're eating a little different food than what you thought you was eating. Right. And so these allergies can crop up. Yep. Um, you talked about environmental impact. Yep. Um, and the labeling. Um, who can actually buy GMO? Yeah, you know, we get this question all the time. Uh, people call us, email us, whatever. Do you say, is this so-and-so seed GMO? Nothing we sell is genetically modified or GMO seeds. None of your garden seed companies, or I don't care who they are, they're not going to have GMO seeds. You have to sign a waiver if you buy those. I don't know. I don't think there's anywhere on the Internet you can go buy GMO seeds. You have to buy from an approved dealer, and then you have to sign a waiver. And generally speaking, they're very expensive. So you're not, as a home gardener or maybe even a small farmer, you're not going to have access to GMO seeds. So it's really not a concern for that aspect of it. I think it is. A, it could be a concern as far as your consumer aspect of it. And your animal consumption. And your animal consumption. As absolutely. far as livestock feed. Yeah, if you're, you're feeding them. Yeah, if you're growing your own animals and you're concerned about that, you definitely need to ask that question. Is your corn conventionally grown or is it GMO? Okay. Now, I would suggest if this is a thing that's concerning to you to do a little research on it, and to understand it, to know whether what you should do about it. You should make up your own mind instead of reading what somebody else wants to do. I think you being an informed consumer is nothing but a good thing. So be informed, be able to make good quality decisions about what's good for you and your family and go that route. And don't let outside forces sway you on that. But it seems the trend is we're going less GMO. Yeah, the trend is we're going away from it. That's okay. I mean, there was even a GMO tomato at one time. Really? Oh, yeah. It went by the wayside. But you know why? The consumer did not want a GMO tomato. Mm -hmm. So use the consumer. If you do not want something, then I can promise you the companies are not going to produce it. Okay. And the end, end result, the consumer is the one that makes the decisions. Another little side shoot to talking about food. Did you know that food in the grocery store Year to date, from January to now, has went up 35%. I do. I can tell it in my grocery bill. Yep. Huge increase on grocery prices. Just the month of October, it rose 5.8%. This last October, which was the last numbers we have, because November numbers have not come out yet, was the largest increase in food cost was 5.8%. Now, that's a little bit scary. We don't know where it's headed. I, I read a lot of people, read a lot of articles. People say, well, it's going to calm down next year. I also talked to people in the industry that think it's going to continue to go up. Wow. So we really don't know where food prices are going, but they're, they're trending way up at the moment. So that is a little bit concerning. That is. Yep, with the holidays coming up. Mm -hmm. So how about that? That was good information, wasn't it? Very good. Yep. Hope you learned something. Hope we inspired you a little bit. Hope you're better informed than you were earlier. Mm -hmm. And I hope you enjoy some collards as well as what I'm going to enjoy <laughs> this afternoon. How about that? Corny joke of the week. Yep. You ready? Yep. This was sent in by Jason Stagg in the spirit of Christmas. Why did Santa Claus grow a garden? I don't never get none of these corny jokes. I don't know. No guess. So he could ho, ho, ho all year. <laughs> ah. That is good one. And that fits, that fits, yeah, uh -huh. fits the bill, yeah. Yeah. Good deal. All right, well, thank you all for joining us. We hope you had a great Thanksgiving. And uh, we hope you inspired you and you know a little bit more than you did. Now it's time for you to get out there and get dirty. <laughs>